Hi, every Cambridge IGCSE students. In this series of videos, we will solve Mathematics Paper 4, Variant 2, for May June 2020. Let us start. Question 1 AI divide $24 in the ratio 7 to 5. Okay, we will write here 7 to 5. We will put here total. 7 plus 5 is 12 and in the second row here I will write the real numbers corresponding to these parts for 12 we have 24 dollars okay this is the number corresponding to 12 okay we can say that 12 times what equal 24 12 times 2 so we will do the same for 7 and 5, 7 times 2 would be 14, and 5 times 2 would be 10, and this is our answer here, $14 and $10. Double I write $24.60 as a fraction of $2,870. Give your answer in its lowest term. It's a very simple question. We will divide 24.60 over... 2870 after simplifying using our calculator we will find the answer to be 3 divided by 350 okay triple i write 1.92 dollars as a percentage of 1.60 dollars also it's a very direct question we will divide 1.92 divided by 1.60 or 6 times 100 percent the answer would be 120 percent of course it's expected because the numerator exceeds the denominator so that the percentage should exceed 100 okay d in a sale the original prices are reduced by 15 percent okay this is the sale 15 percent so we pay the pay would be what we will pay 85 percent of the price of the uh, commodity okay i calculate the sale price of a book that has an original price of 12 dollars i prefer to solve this problem as following i write here before the price before and the price after okay the price before is 12 dollars and after is the unknown which is x this 12 dollars represent 100 percent which is equivalent to one and this x represents 85 percent which represents 0 0.85 so we can get x easily by multiplying 12 times 0 0.85 the answer will be 10.20 which is less than 12 of course okay double i calculate the original price okay of a jacket that has a sale price of $38.25. By the same way, we write here before and here after. The original price now is unknown. We have your X dollars. But after sale, we have $38.25. Corresponding to X, we have 100% is equal to 1. And here the same 80 percent which is equal to 0 0.85 to get x we should mm, divide 38.25 over to 38.25 divided by what divided by 0 0.85 and the answer would be 45 dollars which is of course more than the price after sale okay CI Dean invests $500 for 10 years at a rate of 1.7% per year. Simple interest. Simple interest. Okay. Calculate the total interest yield during the 10 years. Okay. Of course, you know that the interest the required here is to get the interest only. Okay. Is equal to, I call it Peter. PTR. P is the principal, which is 500. T is the time, which is 10 years, 
R capital, which is R small, 1.7 divided by 100. Okay. And after calculating it, the result will be 85 dollars. Okay. Level I. OA invests $200 at a rate of 0.0035% per day. Compound interest. Okay. Calculate the value of all his investment. Investment, not just interest, but investment means total amount of money. At the end of one year. Okay. The rules said that investment is equal to the principal multiplied by 1 plus our small 100. Okay. Or the power of t. The principle here is 200 bracket 1 plus r small, which is 0 0.0035 over 100, or the power of 1 year, which is 365 days. Some students tell me why they don't put here 1 because the ratio here is per day per day as he uh, wrote it in bold okay so according to this we should try 365 days and the answer after approximating to three significant figures would be 203 okay triple i edna invests 500 dollars at a rate of r small percent per year compound interest at the end of six years, the value of Edna's investment is $559.78. Find the value of R. Okay, so we have the investment $559.78 is equal to 500 bracket 1 plus R, which is unknown, divided by 100, all the power of T, which is 6. Okay, at first we will divide. 559.78 divided by what? Divided by 500, which is equal to 1 plus r over 100 or the power of 6. To eliminate the power, we take the, the sixth root. Okay, we will take the sixth root and then move 1 to the left hand side with negative 1 and then multiply by 100. So after rearranging and solve for R, R will be 1.9, okay? 2A, P vector is equal to 4 and 5, Q vector is equal to negative 2 and 7, I find 2P vector plus Q vector. Of course, 2P vector means I multiply 2 times 4 would be 8, and then 2 times 5 will be 10. And then plus q vector, which is the same, minus 2 and 7. We will add the horizontal together. With horizontal, 8 and minus 2, it would be 6. And then 10 plus 7 is 17. Okay. Double i, find the magnitude of p vector. Of course, it would be square root of 4 squared, which is 16, plus 5 squared, which is 25. Okay. And it will be square root of 41, which can be approximated to 6.40. Okay. B, A is the point 4 and 1. And A, B vector is minus 3 and 1. Find the coordinates of B. Okay. We have a very, a very simple way to solve this problem. I will start from this point, 4 and 1, and moving according to this vector to reach b so starting from four i want to move three units to the left from four i will move three units to the left so i will reach one okay and starting from one moving up one unit so one plus one will be two this is a very easy but if it's difficult for you, we have another method, method 2. We can solve it as a rule as following. You can say that a b vector is equal to second minus first, b minus a. And then solve for b. b will be what? Will be a vector plus a b vector. a vector which is 
4 and 1 AB vector which can be written as minus 3 and 1 and if you add 4 minus 3 it will be 1 1 plus 1 will be 2 which is the same answer C the line y equal to x minus 2 crosses the y axis okay at g g is the y intercept if we put x equals 0 y will be minus 2 okay part d in the diagram o is the origin o t is equal to 2 t d okay and m is the midpoint of t c m is the midpoint so we can make this sign uh, o t is equal to 2 t d which means that if t d is representing one part so o t would be two parts and all of o d corresponding to three parts okay okay how we can use this information by several ways we can say that ot vector is equal to two thirds of od or we can say that td vector is just one third of od vector or we can say that ot vector is double td vector several ways express this meaning we will use one of them which is the suitable for the problem okay let this complete oc vector is equal to c small vector and od vector is equal to do d small vector okay let us write here this is c vector and this is d vector okay okay find the position vector of m of course uh, in terms of what in terms of c and d okay let us draw o m here this is the required okay okay how we can solve it we can starting from o m vector is equal to o c capital vector which is c small and then plus c m vector okay and let us write here how we can express c m vector of course it's half of c t vector right it's half of c t vector and also c t can be expressed as c o which is minus c and then o t which we just talk, talk about before 2 over 3 d okay again so we have a half here ct vector will be minus c small vector and then plus ot capital which is two third of what two third of od capital which is d small vector after expanding it will be minus half c vector half times two over three will be plus one over three d take this value and put it here instead of cm so it will be c small vector plus uh, minus half c small vector plus one third d vector so the final answer will be what c minus half c it will be half c vector plus one third d this is the final answer which can be written here half c vector plus one third d vector okay in the next video we solve question three